many of you ask me about pricing at your art shows and online. And a lot of times I'm hearing things like, oh, I can't get that in my town. I live in a small town. I can't get that price here. I really think that a formula would help you guys. Um, what you really need to think about is if you can't get that in your town, then you've got to stop doing so much work on your glass art pieces and make artwork that's unique um, that will fall into the groove of your town and getting the money that you can. So I think you'd be surprised at my formula, uh, which I'll go over with you in just a minute. But one of the big things is, like I discussed, is using your materials wisely. So you don't want to buy a 10 by 10 of bullseye glass and then use six inch and make six inch plates out of it. You'd make five inch so you get four out of it. Uh, start buying larger sheets of glass, half sheets, and um, getting the most that you can out of that. Start figuring that out first. So I think that a lot of people don't do that and then what happens is they're finding themselves in a never ending pit of material cost. Uh, that's the first thing. Um, secondly, you have to, you have to judge what your time is worth okay that's a hard thing to do we take you know self-analysis and we look at ourselves as artists and we say you know how, how much am i worth that, that's a hard question so basically what i did was when i first started being an artist i took the minimum wage for the state that i was in that a lot of times that determines the cost of living um or rather the minimum wage is based on the cost of living so if you're in norway the minimum wage is 21 dollars an hour and that's fantastic so you would be a very well off artist but here in florida it's eight dollars and 26 cents so if you're really getting into this what i did first off is i had started at eight dollars and 26 cents and i times it by three so that would be 24.78 so that would be my hourly wage now I'll give you the rest of my formula right now. So we're going to go ahead and look at these boring numbers. Uh, you're not going to look at me anymore, okay? So uh, we're going to do that real quick. But one thing is you have to decide um, how much you're worth. And so this will get you started. And then after a year or so, you know, you start giving yourself raises, just like a business. That's exactly what I did. Raises 5 to 10%. Uh, continue your education and continue adding to your skill set. You'll be surprised. You'll look at your work from from point A to point B, and each year you reassess your work. Am I better at this? Do I know more? Uh, make a piece of glass in 2019 and make that same piece of glass in 2020. See how you've evolved. Constant education is very, very important, guys. If you want to make a business out of this, you need to know many things. This is what I did. Feed myself with education, and now I'm feeding it to you, um, and it worked. So I'm living proof that it worked. So you guys can do the same thing. Add to your skill set, get better at your skill set. If you're engraving now in 2019 and you continue to engrave, this is a line that's doing well for you, in 2020 your, cut, your time should be cut in half to make a piece. Give yourself a raise, 10%. Okay, so that's $2.40 an hour I get, and then your formula, your new formula is based off of that. Um, I also apply what's called a CAF tax to my art, and that's C-A-F, CAF tax, and that's 20%. What that means is the cool art factor. So if I've got something that I know that nobody else has, for example, this wine bottle holder, uh, I have yet to see a floating bottle in a fused glass wine holder. I haven't seen it yet. I'm not saying it's not out there. I'm, I am saying it's awesome, but I'm saying that I've never, ever seen it yet. So to me, that gets a calf tax. So whatever my price is, if I was doing $60 for this, I would add a calf tax. That's a cool art factor tax. No, it's not a real thing. I made it up, but this is what I did. In other words, I don't see it out there. It's original and unique. So I'm going to add a calf tax of 20% to my price, and I'm going to raise that thing $12 because that's, that's originality, and I'm the only one that's out there selling it. So if you guys are doing shows, you should be walking around your shows and seeing what everybody has. There's I never priced my items before a show. The standard stuff I did, but the unique stuff, I didn't. I would go out there, look at what people have, come right back in, go an hour early just to do that, come right back in, give yourself the calf tax, okay? So let me go ahead and break down my formula, and I hope that it helps some of you. Um, and I think that if you had something to go on, maybe it would, um, you know, brighten your spirits a little more. And, you know, you want to make a profit. It's not a business if it's not a profit. And so let me share my formula with you. Okay, hi, everybody. Here's me. We're going to use a headshot of me while I'm talking. Uh, before we look at the cost analysis sheets and also um, you have to look at boring numbers while I break it down. So uh, here's me. Here's my face. And you know what? This is my skinny picture. So we're going to go with this. Okay. First, I'll do the retail and then I will do um, wholesale. So if you are a retail seller but do not have a business, uh, I'm going to give you my formula and then I will 
do the wholesale. Now, when I'm going to do wholesale, I expect that you are selling to galleries uh, and you are selling in bulk galleries, stores, things like that. Cause I know there's some of you out there and I do have a different formula for that. And I did both and I did them for a very, very long time before I even got into uh, the dis distribution and supply and studio end of it. So first let's take a look at this cost analysis sheet. The first column that we have here is our hourly wage. So I, when I just started out, took the minimum wage where I lived and times that by three. So that's what you guys would do. Uh, if you are selling in a different state, going somewhere else to sell for a show or what have you, um, find out the hourly wage in that state and multiply that by three. The second column here is your supply cost. The third column is the subtotal of the hourly wage and the supply cost. The fourth column is a CAF tax. That's C-A-F, CAF tax. That is the cool art factor. That is something that I did. I didn't get that from anywhere except my brain. Um, and I added 20% to items that were very unique. So search around on the internet if you've got a new item uh, or even the items that you have now, search around and see what's out there. When I used to do shows, I would price the standard items, but then I would always go very early and walk around and see if people had the same thing that I did. Um, and if they didn't, I would add the calf tax to it because I knew that I had a unique item uh, that you could only get from me. The next column is the overhead column, and that is 10%. So this includes your electricity, uh, you know, costs that you typically wouldn't add in. Uh, adhesives, um, kiln time, uh, things like that, just the cost of doing business. So I just want to point out that the CAF tax, um, I take that 20% and add it to the subtotal of the hourly wage and the supply cost. I don't add the CAF tax onto the overhead. The next column you have is the total, which is the subtotal plus the CAF tax plus the overhead, and that would be your retail price. I also have a date created column, and then I also have a date sold column. Now, when I was doing this um, and following this formula, I will tell you that if my products did not sell in 90 to 120 days, that's three to four months, you guys have to determine what your cutoff point is, those items would go on sale. Stale inventory does nothing for anybody. Don't be prideful about it. Put them on sale. If they're not selling, it's wasted money that you've spent and you don't receive that money back. Put those items on sales. Keep good track of this and keep good records. And you're, this will create a system for you that will work. One piece of advice I can give you is you never lower your wage. Your wage, your hourly wage is your wage. That's it. You do not do that. Um, find a way to get your supply, supply costs down. So buying wholesale, obviously getting a tax number, which usually is free in most states or a very minimal cost of $50, I think, uh, that will help you buy wholesale. If you're unable to buy wholesale or you don't want to deal with the whole tax situation, buy larger quantities. For example, instead of buying five by 10 or 10 by 10 pieces of glass, buy half sheets or full sheets. This will bring your costs down. Um, maximize most of your materials. If you have a 34 by 17 inch sheet, um, think about how many six by six plates you could get uh, for engraving plates. That would be 15. You wouldn't make eight by eight because you would have a lot of waste on the sheet. So that would be one way um, to figure that out. Okay, so let's take this piece for example. This is a six by six inch piece that was engraved and let's use the cost analysis sheet to work the formula. So I'm going to assume that it took me 30 minutes. That's about what it took. It took me 30 minutes to make this piece. This is a piece of Tecta with black glass on top, full fused, which literally took two minutes to put together. And then it took me about 25, 30 minutes to engrave. So let's say 30 minutes for this piece. I suspect it would probably take you a little longer to start, but again, this is exactly where the time factor comes in that I was talking about if you're a seller. So based on those numbers, if I'm making the minimum wage times three, that is $24.78. But it only took me 30 minutes to make the piece. 
So I'm actually only going to pay myself $12.39, half the amount of that wage. $9.17 go towards the supplies. That subtotal is $21.56. Next is the calf tax. I'm definitely taking the calf tax on this because I know there's nothing like this out there, and that total is $4.31. Then you have your overhead. Remember, my overhead is 10% of my subtotal, which is $2.16. Your total comes to $28. So if Tanya Viet was making these pieces, I'd make them pretty quickly, and I should be selling them retail for $28. Now that's if I was out of the gate. What you really have to assess is your hourly wage. If you're just starting out, I think three times time minimum wage is a good hourly wage. Now, currently, my hourly wage is about $60 an hour as an artist. This is what I have, have determined. Um, so you can play with that number a little bit. The higher that your wage goes up, the higher that your end result and the price is going to be. So you can plug that number in. I just gave you a starting point. Now, for that same plate, I'm going to assume that you are just beginning. So let's say it takes you an hour to make that piece. So now we're at a full $24.78 based on the Florida minimum wage. It takes us a full hour, so $24.78. Supply number the same, $9.17. Subtotal $33.95. 10% overhead, and then my calf tax. So those the calf tax number is going to go up also um, based on the fact that it took you more time to make the piece. So now this six inch plate is $44.14 to sell if it took you an hour to make the piece. So I'm sure you can understand that bringing your time down, if you can't get $44 in the area that you're selling, you've got to find a way to bring your time down. So that wouldn't be the piece that you would make in your area. So based on that information, I'll go back to what I hear on Facebook and emails as I can't get that in my town, but I'm really wondering how many are really breaking down the costs. So if that six inch plate took you an hour to make and the cost analysis sheet says you should be charging $44.14, this includes the overhead and calf tax, then guess what, guys? You should not be selling that piece in that town. Either go to a different town, sell in a different town, or make something different. So if you truly believe, I'd like you guys to try the cost analysis first before you say you can't get the price uh, in your town. But if you truly believe that you can't, get the money where the art show that you are selling at in your town, uh, then you need to switch up the technique. You have to make work that adapts to the economy that you're in. I would suspect that a lot of you really have no idea what price you can get in your town because a lot of uh, test marketing would have to be done with that. But let's just say um, that you think that you can only get $30 for a piece. Um, so you have to bring the work down. You have to bring the time down. Um, so for example, knowing that your wage is $25 an hour and you need to take only 30 minutes to make a piece, what techniques can you do in 30 minutes just to get the price down? Um, so something that has no cold working, uh, maybe not, uh, very complicated engravings. Uh, you need a low cost of supplies. Um, you can do the big mouth paint technique, the etching sticker technique that's free. Those are very quick, very cheap supplies. You really have to analyze where you're at and what techniques you're doing if you're trying to make a business out of this. The bottom line is how much are you going to pay yourself an hour? That's really what it comes down to. Make a list of every technique that you can do and use the cost analysis sheet and break it down and adjust your numbers and make it work. So list every technique, do the cost analysis on every single one, then from those sheets, you can decide what you can sell at shows, what you can sell to galleries, what you can sell to the public. Um, I'm sure that you would find it very fascinating, um, you know, seeing actually what it costs to make your pieces. And again, time is everything. So find ways to streamline pieces. If you're taking six hours to make a piece and you're being fussy over every single little detail, you are definitely not making your profit back on that and you're actually going to go into uh, the hole. So one of the things that I do used to do when I was doing a lot of shows is I would have three price points. Uh, I would have 50% of my items being on the lower end when I started, and then 35% being middle range, and then 15% being high, high range price items. If you find that all the highs are selling, then you would adjust those numbers and maybe go 50% middle and then 50% high. So that would uh, hopefully help you out a little bit. Wholesaling your work. Now let's talk about um, 
wholesalers. Now, I'm not talking about if you are a wholesaler and you're buying supplies at a cheaper rate. If you're a wholesaler and you're buying supplies at a wholesale rate and you're selling to the public, you're going to make more money based on the cost analysis sheet that you will be using. Um, so this would be if you are selling your work wholesale to galleries, stores, um, sales agents, wholesale shows, that kind of thing. Um, otherwise, you guys, you wholesalers, if you're just selling directly to the public, you're going to use uh, the same sheet and you're going to make more money because you are able to buy the material um, at a lower cost. So let's just say this is for wholesaling your work to shops and galleries. Um, this is the sheet that I use for that. It's kind of the same formula, um, but I do have a couple different things. Number one, I do not apply a calf tax to work that I'm selling to galleries and wholesale. Um, that's really their pricing to do. If they think your work is unique, they're going to price you know, your work a little higher. One of the things I'm seeing or I'm hearing by talking with my students about wholesaling is they're not selling in bulk. Uh, for example, if you have a gallery that's wanting to buy some pieces, uh, stop selling three pieces at a time. Wholesalers should expect to buy bulk. The game has changed and gallery owners need to know that uh, we, that they're supposed to be buying in bulk. So you can tell them that the minimum order is half a dozen or a dozen. It doesn't have to be the same exact design, but it should be generally the same technique. Um, so six inch engraved plates can have different designs, but it's the same technique. Make them buy in bulk. If they are insecure and not wanting to buy bulk, that's because they're in, if they're hesitant, that's a better word I should use, hesitant to buy in bulk, that tells me uh, as an artist that they're insecure about selling my work and um, they don't think it's actually going to sell or they don't want to do the work or they can't, don't have the means to sell that amount of product for you. That's not the gallery for you guys. True wholesale, you should be finding a place that's willing to buy your minimums, half a dozen or a dozen, and then also the reorder is the most important thing. Selling the first order is exciting, but it's the reorder to me that was always uh, much more exciting. And find a gallery that has a confidence to sell your work. Now, these days it's a little different. You used to keystone it. Um, you know, you would if you had a uh, you if you had a plate that was sixty dollars, and then you wanted to sell it to a gallery, they would expect fifty percent off at thirty dollars. It's really not that way anymore. It's more like forty percent um, in your favor. But work out your retail price first wholesalers work out your retail price first and take um, you know the 40% off so what I do is to get to that retail price is I use the cost analysis sheet again so let's break down the wholesale costs I think you'll find this very interesting if you're selling bulk um, let's let's take whole numbers just to make this easier for us so let's say that my wage is $25 an hour um, and my supply cost as a wholesaler to make this plate are $5 that total is $30. I still do a 10% overhead. That's absolute must. So $30 plus $3 is $33. For wholesaling, I would apply 1.5%. I always times 1.5% because in the end, you're reducing your cost so much for the discount. You're hoping to make that up in bulk sales, um, but this is what I've always done. I've times it times 1.5%. That number would be $49.50. This is what your retail number would be, but you're not selling retail, but this is the retail number you base your percentage off of, the discount that you're giving the gallery. So your retail price would be $49.50 per se, and then you would take 40% off of that, and that leaves you with $29.70. So this is what your wholesale cost of this plate would be, $29.70. Now, if you look at that number, it will match up just about, it'll be off just by a slight amount of your hourly wage and your supplies. You're not sacrificing any of your hourly wage with wholesale, and you're still getting your supply money back. So look at works, $5.00. $25 equals $30 plus your overhead is $33 times that by 1.5%. That is your imaginary retail number, which is $49.50. And then you're giving the gallery 40% off. Your wholesale price is $29.70 for that plate. This is the formula that I've always used with jewelry, with work. I don't sell anymore, um, you know, but that's, that's the way that it is. So if you even had something lower than that, if it would work. If you had something higher than that, it would work. But this is my uh, formula. 
Now, it doesn't mean to say that it's going to work for you, but I think it would get you guys off on a right uh, start. This is what I use, and I always stuck with it. Every year, I reassessed myself and gave myself a 10% raise on the wage factor. So you can see the wage is a big number, and it really does come down to your time. Find pieces that are unique, that don't take a lot of time, especially if you're wholesaling. So I will upload the retail and the wholesale cost analysis sheets for you guys, and uh, you can use them if you wish. The last thing I'm going to say about this, everybody, uh, let me just give you um, a couple other words of advice. When you have a engraved plate, such as you've been looking at this whole time, and you have it out on your table at a show, or you're selling it on Etsy, or you're selling it on your website, or you're selling it on Facebook, please don't just put fuse glass plate. Okay, that's great. And you know what? People might see value in that they might not but what they may see value in more is if you really let people know the work that you did people are that are by art are interested in art and they want to know what you did i would display and market this place as you know a, a fused glass art tray with 18 karat gold that has been hand engraved with and then uh, with enamel something like that let them know the work that you've done and let them know the material this is an 18 karat gold transfer it has been hand engraved. It has enamel in it. I mean, these these are very strong selling points. Suddenly, the fused glass plate that you had on your table that you might have put for twenty five dollars, well, you can mark it up to forty because people know that you you hand engraved that. Yes, yes, I did. People want they appreciate art and appreciate the work that you do. So really, set up a nice display and really tell the customers, um, you know, what you've done and the artwork that you've done. And people will appreciate that and let you know that by purchasing your art. And the last thing I want to say is I'm a really big advocate of this. Everybody, please stop undercutting each other in glass art. I've seen pendants on Etsy for $12. It makes me, my skin crawl, okay? Stop undercutting each other. If people would just stay in the general range, you're de you are devaluing the art. You're devaluing other people's artwork when you are continually undercutting and uh, playing the Amazon game. This is supposed to be art, everybody. If you're a seller, you should be appreciated. Nothing is more upsetting than to see beautiful work for $15 a plate on Etsy uh, because it's the lowest bid wins. I'm really, really trying to get, talk to everybody into raising their prices, using a steady formula, and raising the value of art, raising the value of your product, and everyone basically making more money on the art that you've done.